What is at stake in this fight? Everything. We're talking about pistol braces. We're talking about how a line that's very important coming out of the 2008 case DC versus Heller regarding what firearms and items are in common use because those are the ones that deserve the most Second Amendment constitutional protection. How does this play together with down the road gun control people banning AR-15s, banning handguns? We're gonna tie this all together here. Even if you don't have a pistol brace, you need to watch this video because this absolutely affects you. Let's get into it. So in 2008, the U.S. Supreme Court made the landmark ruling that I'm sure many of you down the lens have already heard about, D.C. versus Heller, which established many things concretely, among them the individual right to keep and bear arms. Now, of course, there's still lots of finer points that need to be sorted out in that. That was a good starting point. Importantly, one of the key provisions inside the Heller court's decision was the fact that when it comes to which firearms and items are going to be the ones that are going to be protected, the court focused on and they developed a common use test, for lack of way of putting it. In other words, how do we know a firearm is definitely going to be protected by the Second Amendment? Well, it's in common use. And we saw the New York Rifle State Pistol Association case some 14 years later, coming out of June of 2022, continue to follow that thread when they specifically said that, yes, handguns, those are absolutely in common use. They are absolutely protected by the Second Amendment. Great. Fine. But we also know that there's lots of enemies of the Second Amendment. There's lots of gun control advocates who are pushing for so-called assault weapons bans, assault pistol bans, apparently, not to mention limits on certain calibers like 50 BMG, perhaps 338 Lapua, and who knows what else they're going to come up with down the line. We already see, of course, magazine bans and all this other kind of stuff. So the question is, how does the fight regarding the pistol brace rule from the ATF fit into all of this? Because in my view, it absolutely does. Here's how it does. So first, there's going to be a preliminary question that we're going to get to before we get to the really juicy stuff. So stick with me because this is actually a really important point that a lot of people are missing. The preliminary question is this. We have to distinguish legally between firearms and accessories. And I say we have to distinguish legally because Lord knows the gun control folks definitely are. They are claiming things that like magazines are not protected by the Second Amendment because they are an unprotected accessory rather than a protected firearm. That's right. We've done some videos talking about this before, but just very briefly, you're gonna have to keep yourself on a lookout for this issue, particularly coming out of these magazine ban, so-called high capacity, i.e. normal capacity magazine ban cases, because they're doing it on the basis that accessories are not firearms and therefore they're not protected. Okay. So if pistol braces are going to be protected by the second amendment, this is going to be part of the test then let's get back to the common use thing. The ATF estimates that there's between three to seven million pistol braces. The Congressional Research Office estimates that the number is significantly higher, upwards of perhaps 10 to 40 million such devices. If the ATF and the gun control advocates are gonna be able to claim that either 10 to 40 million or even three million to seven million, either of these number ranges are not common use, do you have any idea how many firearms are going to allow to be banned because they're not in common use? Yes, these are the battles that are coming up. And yes, this is exactly why this matters. Even if you're not a pistol brace enthusiast or owner, you absolutely have a dog in this fight. All firearm owners do. Let's take a look at some of these numbers. So I'm going to start by saying that sometimes it's really difficult to pull these numbers out there. So I've done some quick internet perusals and I put these together. I'm sure that some of these are wrong. Let me know in the comment field below and we can expand this list as well if folks want to see a follow on video. When it comes to model 1911 and its copies, there are around between about 1 to 2.5 million made for non-governmental use in the United States. I wouldn't be surprised if that number is somewhat higher these days, but just the same. Again, when even the lowest ATF number puts the pistol braces at 3 million, then if the ATF can ban pistol braces, why can't they ban 1911s? Yes, the U.S. Supreme Court said that handguns are common use, but guess what? So are rifles are in common use. And if the ATF is saying that a pistol brace is now part of a part of a rifle setup or part of a pistol setup, and we can ban that, then you can see how suddenly the logic and the dominoes start to fall, which could lead them to perhaps banning individual classes of firearms, which by the way, they are already doing as part of assault weapon bans. All right. So again, 1911s, that's gonna be low hanging fruit for the gun control advocates, even though it's generally a lower capacity handgun. 
There were over 6 million 1022s manufactured, by the way. And while there's probably less still around today if they were not destroyed and being lost in, you know, various boating accidents or exported, doesn't change the fact that 6 million still falls within the parameters of what the pistol brace rules are by the ATF numbers of 3 to 7 million. So does that mean that 1022s could be banned? Likewise, even the Smith & Wesson Model 10 revolver, the most common duty revolver for generations of law enforcement, about 6 million made, right? Remington 870 and Mossberg 500, quintessential pump action shotguns, about 10 million to 12 million each made, with an unknown number of those sold to military as well as exported. But once more, if we transition now to the Congressional Research Office numbers, where we see between 10 to 40 million, this is only at the very low end of what the Congressional Research Office said is the number of pistol braces out there. So if pistol braces can be banned, I guess Remington 870s as well as Mossberg 500s, those can be banned too, right? Likewise, the Marlin Model 60, that little, again, kind of the 1022 competitor, which was produced between 1960 and 2020, as I recall, 11 million made. So once more, does this mean that that can be banned? Let's go to the big kahuna, AR-15s. Now, it's actually very difficult to figure out the exact number that are out there because oftentimes these get conflated and mixed in with other so-called assault weapons and AKs and so on. The most reliable numbers that I seem to be able to have pulled out is there's probably between about 20 to 24 million AR-15s in circulation in the United States. And that number, of course, would go up significantly, although not so much. I mean, we're not talking tens of millions, but it would definitely go up if we start looking at other so-called assault weapons, such as Kalashnikov style rifles, AUGs, M1As, G3 pattern rifles like HK91s, 93s, FN, FALs, all that kind of stuff, right? Right. So we're still only to the mid-range number of pistol braces. If the ATF wins on pistol braces, nothing is in common use. And to that point as well, if we lose on assault weapon bans, those are the most common firearms in the United States. Nothing is in common use. That's the reason why even if you're not an AR-15 owner, even if you're not a pistol brace owner, you absolutely have a dog in this fight because legally, if they can ban pistol braces and if they can ban AR-15s, everything is up for grabs at that point. So guys, if you wanna see more videos like this where I'm not responding to some sort of emerging case, some sort of ATF ruling, but I'm just kind of going off things and I'm trying to see how the chessboard pieces are moving together. And what does this all mean? Let me know in the comment field below. Or if you'd rather just have me react only to particular cases or ATF rulings, let me know in the comment field below as well. If you wanna get this message out there and help the channel, please consider clicking like, and of course, sharing it around on social media, all that other kind of good stuff. We always appreciate a good subscribe as always, it's been a pleasure and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.